So what is this? This this oh this is your your own podcast? Yeah, I had a had a few interviews and then my head was just banging. So I just pulled the pin. Why? What why? What happened? Nah, I just I just couldn't I had a whole bunch of things we needed to do and uh you know, we had COVID hit and then I was just gonna be um, we started breeding puppies. I was going to do the podcast. I was going to get a whole bunch of things going on. And then uh -huh. my head was just migraines and yeah. I couldn't focus. It was just too, just too much. So you, you just gave it up for now or are you going to come back later? And, and I had, Man, I had it like the start of – I had a plan to do it all along. Like I had uh, my sponsor, Black Scale in Brazil, and that was a plan even with them. I was going to do podcasts before, you know, a whole bunch of them were out. I mean, the only guy doing it then back then was Dave. Um uh, and that was it, you know. Mm. Um, so, so how many? So how many podcasts did you make? And I did like three. I did like Dexter, William, and Juan. Oh, really? How come I don't even know? No, I, don't, I haven't even. I didn't edit them. I just had them all done, and I had them it had it all ready to go, and I was going to do it all myself um, and do all the post production. Oh. <laughs> That's messy as, especially when you got a migraine trying to. I know. Everything. I was going to get to that too because you know, first I want to know one thing. Yeah. Are you retired or not? Nah, nah, not at all. Okay, because nah. you don't look retired right now. So t talk to me, <laughs> talk to me, Josh, yeah. for, about, good, you know. Good to see you, mate. Good, good to, to see, see you, you, brother. I mean, yeah. come on, it's yeah. been a minute. I mean, for yeah. damn COVID. And then you, you don't, you're not very active on Instagram lately. So nah, I had a break. Yeah, had yeah, a yeah. Break. So great. I talked to Tony the other, the other week. And, uh, Big and, uh, TD. Yeah, yeah. So we talked a little bit about you and. And I said, listen, you got to help me out with Josh, you know, because I need to, you know, because you're not very good with texting back immediately. You take your time. <laughs> <laughs> you take your time with texting people back. Hey, don't, it's even family go, if there's an emergency, we're not calling you, you're, you're just, you don't get back. <laughs> so you always, you've been, you, you're like this with everyone. So it's not only me. Okay, yeah, it's makes, not. Makes Sorry, me, mate. It's makes, not. makes me feel better. So, but I want to know, you know, because I remember, when was it, two years ago or when you was getting ready for a show, you were actually really looking really, really good. And then whatever happened, you know, you had to pull out due to that. What exactly happened? I want to hear it from you so know we exact, so you, people can understand exactly why Josh yeah. Lenatovich was gone for, for a little bit of time. Yeah, thanks, man. It's, it's uh, I don't want to, um, bad things happen to everyone, mm -hmm. right? It's just a given. You can't get through life without something bad happening. And you do talk to some people who have a pretty cruisy life and they go through one thing or something. I feel like I've gone through multiple things and it happens. I've gotten through it. Um, it's been really, really difficult. But um, I'm on the other side of it, thank mm -hmm. God. But what, uh, what, what was the issue? Man, I, I got back from – I won the, the big man contest in Spain mm -hmm. and uh, Emilio – Love you, dude. He's a great dude. He's uh, totally right over there, and um, and man, my wife was pregnant, and it was like in Spain. Tried paella for the first time. It was like life's great. Awesome. Traveled Europe, went to um, Body Power, and um, for like a guest appearance, and then come home, getting ready for the Mister Olympia. I started getting these weird headaches, and I was like, I never get headaches. What's going on here? And um, so I went to the doctor and I just said, hey, man, I'm getting these headaches and I never get headaches. And he's like, oh, I'll take some aspirin. And I said, no, I got like a little lump here. And um, my brother, when he was 18, had this tumor. And I'm like, maybe, no, no, nah, nah, you're okay. Just take the aspirin. And um, I went home, couldn't sleep. Went back the next day. I said, man, I need a scan. I want this scan for my head. And he said, all right, I'm, and I'm a hypochondriac, man. I think if I wasn't, man, bad things probably would have happened. Mm -hmm. Like you and I know bodybuilding, everyone's got to die some way. You know, no one's, the goal of life isn't to live the longest, but at the same time, you need to do things to protect your health and your family and stuff. So doing things the right way is important. Um, so I went went back, got the scan, then I come back and said there was a tumor and I was like, Phew. Mental, and then um, even the doctor said, "Oh, don't worry. It's you know, it's said to see a neurosurgeon." And he said, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's the last time I see this doctor." Um, got the referral. Had a friend who's a neurosurgeon, 
and he kind of rushed me through the system really fast. And luckily he did because it grew from, it was this weird tumor in my skull. Um, they're really rare, extremely rare. Mm -hmm. um, and I went from that to um, going in, I was so positive. Like even the, the neurosurgeon was a real, like really bad socially. And I'm like, this guy's got to be like a, a genius, like on the cusp of autism or something, you know, like it was just, <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah, he was just like, this guy has got to be great. Yeah. And he did the surgery and he went home, which was normal. Everything went great. And then my brain, the thing started swelling. Like once you cut up, cut open your skull, um, you, you, my brain started swelling and I was getting ready for the Olympia. I was over 300 pounds at the time. And, um, and then I had this, I was like, had this episode, like a seizure. I was going off like a frog in a sock. That was while and, you, uh, while you were still out or you were, yeah, I was, I must've been coming back like out of, I was in recovery. So, you know, when you're in recovery after being put out, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of half there, half not. And, um, and then I'm getting woken up by my wife saying, you've been in the coma for like you know, over a week. And I was like, what? I just couldn't comprehend but, it. But they put and, they uh, put you in a coma, right? First they put me because you got this huge dude going crazy. Oh, yeah. And um, so they got scared and they put me asleep. And then the next day they should have used this tube to wake me up and they didn't. And it's... um all this liquid went in my lungs and I nearly died. Oh, wow. And I would have had to have this tracheotomy. And uh, luckily this anesthetist come in and quickly put the pipe in, saved my life. And then um, they put me asleep for over a week. So it all cleared. Otherwise I would have just, I would have died. So. How, how was it waking up and finding out that you were gone for like a week? Man, I couldn't, couldn't comprehend it. And it's you crazy. see these movies and, yeah. They get in a coma and they get up and they stand up and they're walking around and I'm like, no such thing, huh? No, don't piss on my back and tell me it's raining. And that doesn't happen. It's like I couldn't even walk. And I'm like, I was squatting, like, uh, lunging like four plates a side. That's like four hundred and forty pounds. I, like I saw that. Before. That's some crazy shit. Yeah, I like saw days that. Days before, super super heavy squats, like seven plates a side and stuff. And that was days before. And then even after a week. I couldn't, I couldn't stand up. Like I was in bed and they were trying to get me to stand up and I'm like, I'm standing. And they said, you're not, you're not standing. So you have to learn how to walk again. And like, imagine that getting ready for the Olympia. Right. And then, yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Like, a, like, you know, it is you're doing now as a cardio and you're training heavy and then can't, can't even stand up, can't even walk. And it was just like a lot to comprehend. And then, well, my wife was about to give birth, like it was our first child. So she was coming in heavily pregnant. And uh, yeah, so that was like a... And so, so yeah, that's, it had to be, yeah. that was, that's got to be depressing, though. Man, I went, went there and I still thought oh, I could still do the Olympia. And I got back on the plan and my head was pounding. And um, So you still have the headaches back. now? So this is what happened. I had that one and then I started getting ready for the Olympia and even Tony was like, gosh, you gotta, you gotta like pull the pin on this. Like I was just, my issue in my past was doing contests that I probably shouldn't have done. Like either for, a, to make um, sponsorships have sponsors happy, which is important to do. You're representing mm -hmm. their brand. So just to get exposure is important. Even if you're not winning the contest, I think getting up there and still getting a place and uh, giving them exposure is great or getting up there for your brand. Like, you know, so um, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Mm. You know, if you're not like, what's happened to Josh? I'm not on social media. I'm not doing contests. It's like you're out of sight, out of mind. So um, I, th I thought it was important to do contests. So even that I was like, even my neurosurgeon said, cause I said, is it bodybuilding related? Like, is it from, you know, you know, we dabble in little bits and pieces. And even that, like, we have it the worst in Australia. Everything's fake, like oh. horrible. So even in hospital, the endocrinologist come in. So I was in hospital for weeks and they said, um, you said you're on GH, you're not on, you're not on GH. And I said, yeah, I'm on, I'm on GH. No, you're not. We did all your testing. You're not on, 
not on it at all. <laughs> so, I just, so you what? find out, so you find out all this shit's fake. Yeah, yeah. What's, <laughs> what's from a pharmacist here? And I'm like, messaging, oi. Are you what's serious? This? Yeah, I'm like, what's this? But then, but then again, I mean, GH is only, well, I mean, you can only detect it for what, what, 24 hours? Yeah, but straight away, like, as soon as I was in hospital, they run a whole panel of everything. And of course, you go in, you, I'm getting ready for the for the big show. You're going to do what's required, right? Uh, so that's what I mean, man. It's just wow. And, peop and people have said, oh, it's because of this and it's because of that, and that's why Josh had the the tumor. It's not. Oh yeah, don't go by what. Do don't, it. Yeah, don't go by what. And I said. and he's and I said to him after I said, man, it's, that's it. My career's done, right? He said, no, it's got nothing to do with bodybuilding. He said, if you get back, you get back into competing, it'd be like a really good. Um, a really good recovery story, like a good thing to put your mind into. And uh, the neurosurgeon, I know he's a bodybuilder as well. So he's, he's like really encouraged me the whole way through nothing to do with your bodybuilding career. You need to just get back into it. So what happened was I would started training and getting back into things. And this part of my skull, it, cause they needed to take it out straight away. They couldn't give, they couldn't put a plate to fix whether they took the skull out. And they, he just thought, you know, it could be okay. So training away, lift, getting back to normal, lifting heavier. And uh, and then I'm like, nah, this isn't right. I'd get home and it'd be like, it'd be like a hole. Like, you mm. know, like things would suck in. It's like you, one of your balls was put inside your body. You know, it was <laughs> like, what's, what's going on here? And uh, That's crazy. So it's crazy. And I'm like, he went, I went back and I didn't have to do that surgery. I could have lived with like a bit of a, caved in head and it, sometimes it was just normal, but then you train and it's like, oh, this is weird. It's got this fucking little hole in my head. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So they took the, the pizza skull out? Yeah, they took the and skull. And didn't replace it? No, because that's where the tumor was. Normally they would cut around, it's called a craniotomy. They would cut around the skull, take, remove the skull piece, do the brain surgery, and then put the skull piece back in. Because my tumor was in the skull, you can't put that back. Oh. So they just took it out. And that's why people thought Josh had brain surgery. It's like, look, I had head surgery, which was the skull, which is still major surgery. It did grow. It did protrude a little bit into the part of the brain, which is um, the frontal cortex. You don't need that to live. <laughs> you, do. <laughs> you, you don't need uh, it. You don't need it. You don't need that. Right. And, um, and then uh, so I did the surgery again. And then I went for my check-in. Everything was great. That that surgery went well, knocked out, back awake, job's done. Um, saw the neurosurgeon, get back into training. Uh, got back into training just slightly. And then I just remember trying to get into my car. I remember doing this row, bent over row, it was all light. And then I remember trying to get into my car and the, the paramedics, uh, I hear this calling and it was the paramedics, it was an ambulance. And, I'm, and they're like, you're not driving. And I'm like, what? And they said, you've, you had a seizure in the gym. Said, you didn't even know. I didn't even know. I blacked out like that's eight, man. You know how long that is to black out and an ambulance to come. And then like that, that whole time would have been what, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe just the whole time to wipe out. I had no idea. No idea. And then when I got into the ambulance, they're like, oh, um, you know, who's, uh, What's your age? Didn't know. Uh, what's your last name? I'm just like blacked out. Like I don't know. It's like you had a bender for three days and you mm. you're just out of it. And um, and he just said, uh, "What's um?" And he, the guy just they could see I was getting a bit worked up. I said, "Don't worry, relax. Um, we'll take you to your hospital. We you had your surgery." Um, and then yeah, they put me on like anti seizure medications and stuff. And then everything was good. Got ready, started getting ready for the Arnold's, um, which was it's probably a silly move, but I was just so mentally focused on this contest. 
And where the frontal cortex is, it's like the captain of your ship, right? It's like your goal setting and your direction. So I was just so focused on bodybuilding that it was, no one could tell me, hey, Josh, you, sh you shouldn't do this one. So after that second surgery, I was just going for it. And mm. it was like the hardest prep ever. There were all these side effects happened with feet and breathing. And but you couldn't tell me, you can't tell someone who's got like a swollen, like a bit of trauma to their head, like, hey, don't do something that you've, you want to do. And plus it was like, we had all the fires here at the time. You would have seen it overseas. Australia had these really crazy fires. I remember that too, yeah. Most of the country was on fire. So there was like smoke outside and they were saying, stay inside, stay inside. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm like, I'm getting ready for this, this contest. So I'm walking outside and that wasn't obviously good for the lungs. Um, but I was just really driven at the time. Hmm. Then I did the contest and that's the first time in my life I placed uh, out of the top 10. And I was like, and I was just like, um, so happy that I did the show because it was like really empowering to go after going through. What, what Arnold are we talking about right now? That was the US Arnold before COVID hit. 2020. 2020. So I went through all that crap and then did that contest. And uh, it was, um, I don't know how I did it, man. I was doing like three hours of cardio because I, all the medications, man, they put all this weight on. Right. Like you just. Oh, man. Like, you know, like your mum is like feeding you at home, keep eating, keep eating. And I'm like, we had Christmas and she's like, Josh, you've got to stop eating. Like, you know, just <laughs> eating all this food. Wow. Couldn't hold myself back. So, so when um, on, the, on the flight here to the US, there, there's no problem with the pressure? Yeah, the pain, the head pain was huge. The, I, man, I don't know. I, I don't think anyone sounds arrogant saying that or, or boastful, but I don't know many people that could have handled that. Like I was in agony every day and i was on medicate pain medications and stuff like that which is like oxys you're not going to compete very well when you're on oxys all the time mm. but you just can't tell when you're in that headspace and um so yeah i did the contest didn't place well felt a bit shattered for my sponsor you know if, i don't know about you man but i always felt like if i didn't win the show or place well, i'd let all these people down like I let my fans down, I let my friends and family down, sponsors down. Um, did you ever feel like that no. when you competed? Like if you didn't win, you felt like? No, because, you know, I mean, I was in the era where I, 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 I didn't think I was going to be winning every show. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it was a little different in my time, I guess. And I, you know what, at the end of the day, for where I felt like if I place top six in the shows I go to, yeah, that's, 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 that's good. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I didn't feel like that. You know, of course, when I when I didn't even make top ten once or twice, I of course, yeah, I didn't feel like I let anybody else down. It, this sucked for me. I hated it. I, I I hate to lose, and I hate to not even be in competing. You know, not, you know like like almost like you you don't even belong on that stage. You know what I mean? That's the only feeling that bothered me. But no, I didn't feel I didn't let anybody down because I always gave it my all. Yeah, you yeah. know. That's good. That's good. Um, so, but how you feel then, today, though? Not now. And af, af, well, after it, here's the thing: we had COVID hit, right? So everything got shut down. I was already hurting from the week from the year before, and then you know, 2019 was a very hard year. And then add into that, and you, uh, which is a blessing from God, a baby, and um, my son, and then having 2020 hit and everything being taken from you, your work, your income. Like I remember we were within, as a bodybuilder, I'd always worked and worked and worked. And then I thought with all that stuff happening in 2019, I was just reliant on sponsorships, which was amazing because I could do that. But then within 24 hours, every sponsor was gone. Like it was, that's when COVID really hit at the start. So because of and COVID, uh, you lost sponsorships because of COVID? All of them, all of them dropped off, yep. Yeah. So oh, my main yeah. sponsors were in Australia and then I had Black Skull in Brazil, which was they're the they're the best, man. They still paid out over the course their contract. It was over months. They lowered it, but then they paid it out. They didn't they didn't have to do like they didn't have when they I had my surgeries, they could have just, you know, dropped me. And um they kept they kept it. They're like really honorable. Yeah. Um love those guys. Marcel uh, Marcelo was a good guy. Marcel is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And Roberto, Fernando, they're just, they're legends. Hmm. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then later on, 
I couldn't train. It's the first time I couldn't train. Like I couldn't, because I had the seizures, I wasn't allowed to drive. So did you have so, did you have more seizures after that, or was it just a two? So I had the first, that seizure in the in the gym, and then um, I had another seizure um, through the year in 2020. Like I, I, as it kind of started, couldn't train anywhere. Was that another one where you blacked out, or you felt it coming? Yeah, same thing. It was. They're called grand mile seizures. There's a whole different bunch. That's the worst one where you just black out. Hmm. So. Um, I went and trained around at my friend's uh, friend's gym, which was around the corner of the, his house, which you you weren't allowed to. But I'm like, man, this is getting too much. Um, and of course, you don't train; you get depressed as well. Like you've got all these endorphins and dopamine. So not training, it was um, it hurt. So I went to, to to get back into it. That was I was like three four months of just dealing with the pain and agony. Because after that point, after the Arnold's, there was nothing to focus on. It was just living in pain. And, um, and I thought I need to get myself back to normal. I went to my friend's place, uh, first session back. And because uh, I was on so many med- so much medication at the time, trying to deal with this pain, because um, that that's what happened. I went back to the surgeon and said, there's something's wrong, like I'm in pain. And, and they were just trying to throw med- medications at it. And of course you've come off a show and you're detoxing your body out. Like I'd always did bodybuilding the right way and the safe way. Um, and that was what was kind of annoying to me that this happened as well. But at the same time, um, if I wasn't so strict about my health, I wouldn't have found it. I probably would have, something bad would have happened. Mm. Um, like imagine that you had this ruthless kind of mental attitude, no matter what happens to me, I'm doing the show, the Olympia, and I'm not getting the surgery and it's just bad. But, so, but what, 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 what are the doctors telling you now since they did the surgery, the tumor is yeah. removed? Yeah. And how come do you still have seizures then? Yeah, so this last seizure was at the sort of beginning to middle of 2020. And, oh, uh, okay, so it's been a I had, had my friends at my friend's house and then I f- he had a deadlift platform. I don't know, I fell back and hit back the corner of my head. I landed on the deadlift corner of the platform, like the metal. So he freaked out. Of course you would. I felt, felt horrible for him. Uh, Dave Kao, he's a legend. He's a top bloke. And I uh, called the ambulance straight away and the same thing. We want you to come to hospital. I'm like, I don't want to go to hospital. And they're like, you, you got to come. Um, so I come and then they they put me on this seizure medication. That's a problem. These seizure medications, they're not good for your mind. They're good to stop a seizure, but horrible. So I just jump from, like, we've got great health cover over in Australia, but then I've got private health, which is even even better. And I just use that to get a good neurosur- a neurologist, which is like a prof- top professor. And then he put me on this really good uh, medication. He said, this is why you've had all these issues. Cause I got really in a really dark place and everyone, I don't want to sit here and be a negative Nancy about it. Mm. But I just, I'm like, man, if you're going through a hard time out there, just like keep pushing through. Like it's only for a season or a couple of seasons or maybe a year but then things get better and uh and they just got better from there from that point on and um now i'm just in a much better place but so, so you're back 100 uh, percent. yeah my head look here's the thing though my head's still in pain like i still get still um i heard like you, you your interview with tony you get migraines as well right like oh yeah i have i have yeah. migraines all my life yeah yeah see i never had headaches it was so confusing and mm. uh i've got an entrapped nerve so they need they that's what causes the headaches. Um, so they're going to do a nerve block, which is kind of a simple surgery or, or Botox, make me look pretty. They'll put that ah. in there and, and numb the area and um, and I should be good to go. So I'm waiting on one person to see um, in, in a couple of months. And then yeah. they said that you're good to go because it's not just, tra- it's not training that does the pain. It's like, you know, if I don't train for a couple of days, it'll, it'll still be there. Mm. Um, so I just train now. I'm like, regardless of the pain, I'll just yeah. do a session and it'd be good. So, so I mean, you 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 look physically, you look like you're back to where it was, mm. training wise. Not really, mate. I'm just. I took it easy. I took the whole time. We I took like since the end of the show. I'm like, if I'm not competing, I don't I don't do that. The special sauce, right? I'm just take it off, and then. Um, it was like I saw this endocrinologist as well. I've always been strict to make sure make sure things are good, and then he just prescribed me like Reandron, which is great. Like it's just really slow acting 
you know, Esther. Um, so I took that for like the start, the start of this year. So I've had like two, two of them. Um, and then that's it. Like, I'm just trying to get back into it. And mm. uh, there's a lot of room to grow, but I'm just, it's, it's, he's been so hard being a bodybuilder in Australia. You just can't, I know. can't do it, everything. I know. I've, I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Yeah, so. you lived here for, yeah. you know what it's like. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. You know, it, 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 do you think this is ever going to change or that just, just don't care? No, I still care. And then, and, then, and then also the prices. I mean, it's not, it's, it's oh, already true. hard to get something. Yeah. And then the prices are out of this world. That's stupid here. People don't get it. That's why it's, you go overseas and do a show and you're, it's what? It's, that's, that's, that's the cost of it. No. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I know. And uh, here it's just, it's a joke. And, um, and most of it's just fake. Like yeah. it's, it's just fake. So, so, so you I, think even the, farm, the, 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 the the DH that you guys get from the pharmacy that wasn't real? Yeah, it was. It was like a. That's what this. That's what messed with my head a lot. Wow. I was like, how is this not? It should be what it is. And uh, even people you ask, like close friends, I got it from. You know, everyone says this is from a, this other place from a pharmacy. Like I knew the the actual pharmacist, so it was weird. It was like that shouldn't have happened yeah. and um and the whole way through with bodybuilding here it's just difficult i just need to go overseas if i'm going to maximize my potential yeah and i did it all the right way in my life and won the natural shows i was a world champion naturally and then you know on top of that it's it's not it's not just that that makes it important makes everything work you've got to have your food your training you know it all yeah. and then it just you know you, if you do everything the right way and you're using the right you know um enhanced supplements you're uh you're good you yeah. you can be competitive you know it's, right. it's important but even though to what you I, I i heard uh tony told me that you have a second baby so yeah that's all that all that tumor announced it all that all that tumor and the and 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 the seizures didn't stop you from making another baby <laughs> <laughs> we're in like you're in lockdown what are you gonna do yeah. <laughs> locked down for two years but that's and, uh, uh, that's awesome though man that's awesome yeah it's excellent you How, haven't we didn't even announce it yet like it's it's due in like, he it's a boy in like three and three and a half weeks so fast it's that's crazy up. in three and a half weeks Beautiful. three and a half weeks yeah but, i'm yeah, gonna so. i'm gonna be a grandfather in two wow man. Wow. yeah you know it's a boy or a girl girl oh congratulations, yeah, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> thanks You'll so, be like, so, you'll, you'll be have like a shotgun protected that baby. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 keeping the boys I, away. Yeah, I try to, I try to control myself a little bit, but that's crazy. It's almost like you're having another one. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So what's the plan, though? What's the plan? What's your future plan for for Josh? Uh, see how things go this year. I only, only ever want to come back, like as in I'm coming back, but I only ever want to pick a show when I'm at my best. Right. And the, really the only show I put everything into was like my first year. Was, I did the San Marino that you were the MC at. Right. Had a really great, that was my first rookie year, like the San Marino Pro I won, the Lou Frigno Legacy I won. Got third at my first Arnold Classic behind Cedric and Kai. Um, second in Poland, the show before that. And then um, I got like, did the Olympia and got top 10. That was my first proper rookie year and I still didn't have a sponsor, major sponsor. So I'm like doing that all on my own thinking everyone says like, you, you know, bodybuilding can make an income if you're kind of a top 10 guy. And it's like, I'm not, wasn't seeing that. So I was still working, working my ass off and training, competing, which you got to do anyway. Um, yeah. So that was a bit of a shocker. And then uh, fortunately I, I, um, I trained really, really heavy and hard. That's, that was kind of my goal, but I think I need to start learning from like yourself and, you know, I always thought there was time, you know, until something bad happens to you, you always think there's time. You're going to be, and I just needed to be better than I was previously. Mm -hmm. That was always my goal. And, and then after having something like this happen, I thought, man, you can't take it at your own pace, bodybuilding. You need to really put absolutely everything into it. And looking back at the past, the shows I did put everything into a place very, very highly. And I'm like, I need to get that back and do that yeah. again. And, uh, and not just do it for a sponsor or exposure. Um, so you get people pull out of shows all the time here. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you haven't even gone through like a, 
I would have loved surgery and I still did it. I would have loved to see the Josh, your pro debut in San Marino, that physique, same body weight, same everything on the Arnold stage this year, a couple of weeks ago. I would have loved to see that because that would have been some crazy stuff right there. How many times? Over, how many times you hear that? To America, mate. And yeah. Live in Arizona. Because <laughs> that was, I was, I was so impressed with what you looked like. You know, you, you weren't as big as you are. You know, you were later, but yeah. the the combination of your shape, your condition, you know, and the muscularity. I mean, come on, it was it was unbelievable. I was like, who is that guy? Thanks. I should have stayed that way. I just got told. You need to be bigger from the judging I, panel. And I was like, oh, I've really, you know, you get a, when you impress yourself, that's the best part. And when I got the, the video footage and my older brother got me into bodybuilding and he like, I've come home to Australia, put the video, he goes, let me see you qualified for the Olympia. You know, he's the old brother's like a bit of an inspiration for your whole bodybuilding career. Cause he's the one that got you into it. I put it on within two minutes. He's <laughs> <laughs> Just sleeps he, everywhere. He passed out on uh, you. He so passed out on he's you. He's out. He's out. He's out. Yeah, he's out. Um, um, but I'm like, I was really impressed by that look for myself. That was the, the best part. Yeah. Um, so then, but then, yeah. So, the size so do you feel like, bigger. do you feel like you're going to have, you're going to have to at least come back and just prove yourself one more time just to show that this was not a flop? Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. the best of me isn't, isn't done yet. How old are you That's, now? 38. Oh, you so you're still, got, you're still not yeah, old. Still, but, but I've done I've done everything the right way, you know, apart from this issue that I had with my head. Everything's been great. I've just had, like, stress mm. in my life that other people haven't had to deal with before that, like passing away of, of loved ones. I've had it all kind of come into um, the peak of my career. All that was kind of happening at that time. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the hard part to deal with. Are you still in Melbourne now or, or? Yeah, I'm in Melbourne. I wanted to move overseas. It's just difficult now with, you know, yeah. with family and but, having but, cousins but, and stuff. So, so now it's going to be two babe, two kids? Two kids, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. going to make it even more difficult. Yeah. But it's, we've spoken we've spoke more often. I, she's supportive. She's like, if you need to go away for three months, four months somewhere. See, that's what um, I used to do. I used to go yeah. three months before the Olympia. I used to come over to the U.S. and just train. Just be me in the apartment, just focus on training, coming back, cook my own food. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't have to talk to nobody. I was just there all by myself, you know? Yeah. And it always worked. And when I And every time I changed it to come like the last week or two, that never worked. I always needed more time to focus on the show, you know. You were such a man. You you always are a big big unit. But I, and I remember having dinner with you here, and I'm like, man, you can just be one of the guys coming back and destroying so no, many people. No, no, no. I'm done. There's and then, no uh, way. There's no way. Just even that, you getting into um, competing, and it was like, man, it just looked phenomenal. You know, like mm. you, you were such a big unit, man. Just your, your <laughs> thickness of your chest and your delts. Yeah, I, like the shot in front of your car, the white car. Yeah, but you know what? Because that's because I also trained very heavy. And I believe yeah. in when you train heavy, you can actually see it on the physique. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you can see. You can, if somebody doesn't really train heavy, yeah, you can build a lot of muscle. Absolutely can. But there's a different density and fullness to it. You know, so heavy workouts. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, training just heavy is not always great. You know, but to, you also find a happy medium, you know, go heavy a couple of weeks and then back off a little bit, go higher reps, you know, just a little bit for quality, you know, in yeah, your I case, because that. I see how you train. I never, yeah, I never did that. I just I always just went and lift as hard, as heavy as I could. Yeah. Had a system over eight weeks where the first week starts, everything's 12 reps. And then the last week, every set six reps and it builds down over that eight weeks. And I just went as heavy as I could on that last set. That's it. I didn't really do drop sets or giant sets or anything in my career. Hmm. That's something I think I need to do to add more. What did you do for San Marino? What, 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 what was your, what oh, was man, your protocol? I was, like, I was just falling off the, the Stairmaster. I was just like so strict on my food and just falling off the step, like an hour of cardio, falling off the Stairmaster. So I had Chad prep me for like um, my, to turn pro. Uh, and then kind of, I just, he was, he's so strict, as you know, Chad's like, I was just, 
I look my best within, just say we started the prep 12 weeks out. Uh, we did a huge off season for that year. Started the prep 12 weeks out. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Within like three weeks. So week nine, I was better than what I'd been at my last mm. contest. And I was like really kind of impressed with, with the progress. And I'm like, man, I just needed a night off like the cardio. The two hours of stairs each day, it's like it's, I just need a night off then he was just like just keep pushing the cut just keep pushing the conditioning like he wouldn't give a he wouldn't give me an inch because i'd take a yeah. mile you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and no. uh so so i just went uh all right so the next prep i kind of did on my own and when i needed the night off i took the night off but it was rarely but it was good enough to keep me on my diet because that was my issue it was if i pushed like you could tell someone to do two hours of cardio and train each day but if they're if they're a week Prick, they're not going to do the hard work like they're not going to push themselves hard enough mm -hmm. whereas i'd give it everything and because i gave it everything i'd just burn out and then i'd then i'd eat food which is you can't do that you eat something off the diet so when i managed it myself i felt like i could do the cardio push myself and then i'm like if i needed that night off i just put my legs up and put a movie on and just and then get straight back into it the next morning as opposed yeah. to breaking so um, you, you you obviously follow the sport still, and with with the, you know yeah. all the shows that's been going on. So you know, like your last show was twenty twenty Arnold Classic. Yeah. You know, Rami plays third at that show. You know, yeah. same year yeah. he wins the Olympia. He's been two time yeah. Olympia champ right now. How do how do and you he, see? And he, and he had COVID too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I was like, can't be that bad. Yeah, yeah. Randy yeah. gets it and wins Be the Olympia. Because of COVID, he, he didn't make it to – he didn't have any symptoms, though. Yeah, okay. You know, he was just diagnosed with COVID, and, uh, he, found, and, he, found, and he found out because he had to get the COVID test to go to Spain to do that qualifier. Mm -hmm. You remember when he's supposed to compete yeah, in Spain? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he couldn't – they wouldn't let him on the plane because he was positive. So that's how he found out. He wasn't, he wasn't mm -hmm. sick, you know. Man, trying to say no to that guy would have been a bit difficult. It? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but let's let's talk about the honor real quick. You probably watched yeah, the honor. Yeah. yeah, well, did, yeah. How did you see it? What did you see? What is what yeah, is your what are your comments? I love Bonac all the way. It was I love Brendan and we're, we're friends, but Bonac all, all the way. On yeah, that. everybody had Bonac winning. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel for him because there's been a couple of shows where, even here, where. Rolly placed ahead of him and he shouldn't have. And it, the crowd, he's a fat, crowd favorite. So he supported him. He should have won Bonac, even here in Australia that, this one time. So he's kind of had a bit of a rough um, kicking. And I got so much respect for William because he just takes it like a champion. Yeah. And then, yeah, he had a rough year and a half where he, uh, you know, lost a little bit of size, especially his legs. And kind of reinvented himself and came back to the Arnold and just full force. You know, I was impressed. I was really impressed yeah, with him. Very. And uh, very. even then, even though even then he went back from uh, from the Arnold, he flew back to Holland. Two days later, flew back to the U.S. to compete in Boston. He came and nailed it there once again. Won yeah. the Boston in the Boston Pro. Got his qualification for the Olympia. And I think he put himself on the map. Back, uh, you know, for uh, contention for to win the Arnold potential. I mean, the Olympia potentially because, I mean, you know, he, like I said, a lot of people had him beaten Brandon. Brandon is the second best bodybuilder in the world right now, so that means that, that William is still up there, and it's not too late, you know. So yeah, now, so I now, now we need, and now we need Josh him. back. Oh, look, man, I want want to be like I got offered to go to Kuwait. This was after my first year, first year after that Olympia, mm -hmm. Abdul invited me to Kuwait and um, and I was gonna go. And I told Tony, I told people here, I'm gonna head off and family. And then before I was gonna leave, he just, for some reason goes, oh, you need to, um, you need to prove yourself. I was like, what? I who need to prove myself? Who need to prove yourself? Do you need, you me, need to- Me, I need to prove myself, he said. And I said, I've just beaten all you guys, except for 
Ro- like Rolly and Rami, like on my first year, I beat Nathan and Akim and mm. John, you had all these got other pros there. I said, man, just go fuck yourself. And then, um, and then I saw him at the Olympia. I was like, what do you mean I've got to prove myself? Oh, you have to make sure you did some online first. Beta wanted you to do this and that. And I said, Whatever, man. Mm. And, um, and, and then I saw William went there uh, with Abdullah the year before uh, for the, for the Olympia last year last year and I'm like oh man I don't know I don't know about that and then it, he didn't place as well it didn't, didn't, didn't look it, as great yeah it didn't work out at all yeah but I don't, yeah. I don't know if it was I don't think that there was much going on about training and stuff he was just he yeah. was just there to train at the gym in Abu yeah. Dhabi I don't think that there was any any training I tips. do I do wonder because at the time you know I remember beating having that year and I was I'd even, even beaten Brendan in those shows in my first season. And I remember sitting with him in Prague, we're eating after the last show. We did that tour where it was like the Olympia a week later was Barcelona. The Thursday was Kuwait and Saturday was Prague. It was like a lot shows in that three week block. And I'm sitting there with him at the end and he's like, I think I might retire. I think that's it. That's it for me. And then um, next thing you know, he's in Kuwait and then his whole body's transformed and I wonder, what if I had that opportunity to go who, overseas? Who, who said he wants to retire? Brendan Curry. That oh, in, really? That was in 2017. Yeah. Uh, 16. It, it, it completely worked for him, you know. But I, I, and, I, and I tell people all the time, it's because you are away from your everyday, you know, kids. He's got a bunch of kids, yeah. you know. Once you can go somewhere and can just solely focus on training, yeah. eating yeah. and sleeping, if it doesn't work for you, then this sport is not for you doesn't yeah. matter who you are if, if if this doesn't work then you know this is not for you you know and 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 I was the same and I was always better when I was away isolated and just focused on training eating and sleeping you know and it worked for him and, and I'm I'm really impressed with Brandon because he keeps getting better and better I, and, amazing he's done yes, phenomenal yes. he's done a great I got to give props to that he's done he's done amazing there and, yeah uh, and he's yeah, and, and he's he's the I think he's a, a huge threat now, and I and I said yeah. last year that I think Hardy was the biggest threat to Rami. I think Brandon is a huge threat now. You know, he proved it again that you know he's not done. He's not even close. You know, he's just coming into his into his prime. I think, and if he can work on his legs a little bit more, he you know I don't see why he couldn't win another Mr. Olympia title. If Rami is is leaving the door, if Rami leaves the door open, if he slips on condition and stuff, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, and it's it's true that even being at home, uh, even without family, <coughs> even being at home and having all the distractions of friends, family, all that sort of stuff, yeah. everyone knows it's you got to be disciplined. But having that ability to be what be somewhere, have someone kind of oversee you and push push yourself, then uh, yeah, it makes it, it's going to make a big difference. So that's something I need to look at to go overseas and, and yeah. bring out the best in me. You should just can you just try maybe just try to come over. Sees and just get like a training camp. Do like a training camp for six weeks just to see how your body responds. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially maybe, you know, get something that's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no Man, I'm like, this being, this being contest, so sort of, this is this is all garbage. And yeah. I'm competing against the best guys in the world. I'd still place, place well. And I'm like, well, you so, know, it just shows that your training and nutrition is uh, the biggest component of it. And then that's just, the, you know, the icing on the cake. Right. So, but right now you're training, you're back to training normal, you're back to heavy training and yeah, training doing everything I've, the same way. I've got a great setup at home. When COVID hit, I just, I had um, this, this um, dumbbells up to like, what's 60, what's like 70 kilos? 70 kilos pounds. is? Like 2.2, it's like 100 and. 70 kilos is heavy, I can tell you that, because I know kilos. Is it one, 154. 61. Okay, 154. Yeah, yeah. So I've got that all the way up to that. I've got now. I've even got these 50 kilogram. But do you have like a like a like a garage gym or? Yeah, I've got like a three car garage. I've got like leg press. Oh, um, okay. Action curl. So you don't even go to the gym anymore. You just train at home. Yeah, and I sometimes I'll go to like your to like obviously Doherty's and then your old stomping grounds Nitro. Like I said. Oh, really? So I'm closer there now. Yeah. So I kind of go there's snap. <laughs> membership at snap it's like a you know i know snap i know snap i've yeah, been yeah, i've been snap. to one of them in the city yeah yeah it's like a, <laughs> you know it's great snap but for yeah. a professional bodybuilder it's not you kind of 
you know, you know, fit in there. Right. But uh, it's the closest one to here, you know. So that's good. So best case, best case scenario, what's going to happen with Josh? What's when? When can we expect to see you? Uh man, at the end of the year or next year, if I can get away, it'll be the end of the year. Otherwise, if with the baby coming, it looks mm. more like next year. Well, there's year, a but. there's a there's a show in. When is Romania? November? I think it's in November. The Romania Pro is in November. That will be a show for you to qualify for 2023, unless you want to do it this year. Yeah, so what's the, what's the deal now? Because it was always in September, right? The Olympia. Is it still? The Olympia is in December this year. It's always in December now. No, 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 no. Always? It's only this time because, because, of, because of COVID. Yeah. No, last year was September. October. Okay. But yeah. the year before was before December. Was December. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because of the cha- because of COVID and, and, and because of all the shows in Vegas that were canceled due to COVID, everything is full. So when mm-hmm. the Olympia requested uh, a date in, in Vegas, that was the only available date at the Planet Hollywood. Okay. So for next year, I'm sure they'd be back either September or October. Okay. And it's the same thing with last when I was competing, at, you know. Yeah. You do a show at the end of the year and qualify and it's been the whole year prepping. But but it probably would be good for you to do Romania to qualify for 2023 and then take the whole year to uh, yeah. get ready for the Olympia. That's true. Oh, man, I love the Arnold Classics. They, they're they great. Yeah. To do. That's, I love doing them. Well, and, then, uh, then do the Arnold Classic in, in, in March. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, it's like, it's been great being just focusing on family and, you know, having some time off social. And, you miss it, don't but you? But it's, it's true, though. You're like, if you're not, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got to get back into the... Into what, the where are you at a point where you're like, you know what, fuck this sport, I'm done with it. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it's just so much fake shit on social media. Like, hey, you've seen a... What do the people say? They're like, oh, I've been... Uh, sorry, I have, sorry to all my fans, haven't been there for a little bit. It's like, fuck, man. It's, <laughs> what, that life doesn't revolve around you. You've got selfish motherfucker. It's like... Yeah. All that fake stuff and, you know, it's just, it just gets too much. It just gets too yeah. much. But um, it's a great way to connect, obviously, and, and advertise. And, yeah. um, so that, that's, you know, the positive of it. And that's been really quiet. You know, like when you're in the middle of competing, like everyone's at you. I've got it's nonstop messaging and stuff. When you take a step back, you see like, oh, man, this is cool. Like it's nice to connect with the people that are, you know, they're the ones who are there by your side if you're in hospital. Man. You know, they're the ones who are going to be there for you. Well, it's definitely yeah. good to see that you are healthy. You're back to yeah. the old Josh. No Thanks, more man. issues. So now all we do is now just look forward to you getting back in contest shape and yeah. bring your big ass back from down under and compete, man. Hey, I've got to get your help, I think. Well, listen, you want to take... You wanna... I said to Chad, I'm going to get... I'm, we were speaking last year. Oh, really? Uh, starting back up, and I'm like, well, I'm still taking time off, you know, and have given my body good rest, and uh, you know, when I get back into it, let's turn it on again. Get on the and, dream uh, team. Get on the dream team. Yes. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's we're already discussing it. So it'll be awesome. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Have you out yeah. in Arizona for a while? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know? It'd be great. Plenty of opportunities. Great. Plenty of opportunities. Man, I reckon I'd just be just take my physique to another level completely. Yeah. And Great. and sometimes long breaks like this will do, do your body really well. Oh man, it really you work. see what what's just happened? Just doing just like the, the tiniest therapeutic amount that an endo right? Gave. Because I said to him, everything's good, and he did he didn't want to prescribe anything. Look, things are okay with you, and and I said, look, I just want my levels to the peak. Just let's just get them to the peak naturally, right? What like the nat- highest natural level you can right. get, but using the pres- a prescription that you prescribes. So that's it. He's just done two of them since the start of the year because it's a really slow acting one. And I'm like, man, this is, I'm already like nearly 140. Just really, like, what, th- there's nearly 300 pounds. And I'm wow. just like, Phew. that was a prescription one, man. Imagine if I'm able to um, turn it on to the next level. It's yeah. dangerous. But, well, um, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Either- and all the training, man, if it's, that's the thing, if I train differently. You know, you know, you've got so much knowledge behind you as well. It's like if you train differently than just going heavy, heavy, heavy all the time, there's other ways, you know, to build muscle. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't think I'll scratch the surface on any of that stuff yeah. at all. 
There'll be some great footage too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking That's forward true. to it. I'm looking forward to seeing you either in Arizona or back on stage regardless. Yeah. I'm glad to see you healthy, brother. And I know you're going to be a father again in a couple of weeks. That's another yeah. congratulations on that. And thank you. Uh, thank you. And give my regards to you, to your wife and the family, we'll bro. Do. And yeah, same, tell same. Tony I said thanks. You know, he probably helped me a little bit with you, you know, replying to me. I don't know. Yeah, I was just away. <laughs> I just wanted a break from, from everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I get it, bro. I, trust me, I get yeah. it. Sometimes you can get to the point. And listen, and try to keep your, your, your podcast up because I think that's something. We, there's yeah. nothing in Australia. No, no, you know? that's right. There's nothing here. And, so uh, try to keep it up. Sometimes it's a little bit, it's good to do, go away, you know, because you train and bodybuilding, focus on bodybuilding, but the podcast gives you a couple of hours a week, you know, to talk about other stuff, you know, or, or talk to bodybuilders and, and, and you know, and, and compare and, and, and talk about training and all kinds of stuff. I think it's interesting, and I think Australia needs some of that. You know, we have... No, uh, we're, so go ahead. We, we have a... Uh, I know you guys. You guys have the um, what's his name? Um, um, he's got the podcast from uh, from Australia. Um, um, he does desktop bodybuilding. What's his name? Oh yeah, Xavier Wills. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sa- yeah. Xavier. Yeah, yeah. yeah he does one of them. So to maybe yeah. maybe try to collab with him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's put, true. put something that's together. True. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, to get an insight in. You know how hard it is. We're, something's up with professionals where they can just switch on with their diet and their training, and everything's good. Whereas for the general general pop, for a lot of people, they can't they can't do that. So to get inside the mindset of someone and learn how they get, you know, with setbacks, how they keep moving forwards, and all the extra things that are yeah. accomplished, someone to have a great physique, it's important as well. And all the, the mental stuff, I find the most intriguing and interesting. You know, like how people's behaviors, how they set their non-negotiable behaviors and all that, you know, I want to get really deep in a, how does like Rami or that was one thing with Dexter. I found he just had the ability to manage stress completely. Like he was just easy. He didn't have a lot of hardships in his life with when we spoke, but it was like, you know, he was able to manage stress. And that's of course the main component of bodybuilding. If you're stressed out all the time, you're not going to perform. Mm. And, uh, I find that really, really interesting. So, uh, yeah, man, I want to get back into that stuff as well. It was just at the time, you know, I just needed a, needed a break. And after everything I went through, it's like you want to see. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love my fans and 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 stuff. It was wasn't against, you know, not wanting to to um, give out info and show people about my life. It was more that I need to give all this time and energy into my friendships, my family. Mm-hmm. And um, and then get better to me, get back to me again. Because if I'm not a hundred percent, I can't give everyone a hundred percent as well. Abso- know, that's really absolutely, what it was like. absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. why we love Josh, man. So hopefully, Thanks, hopefully everything goes smooth right now. And uh, yeah, I'm hopefully we'll see you back on stage end of the year, brother. We, we will. We All will. right. So tell everybody All I right. said what's up. Tell down. Thanks, give man. Melbourne a huge hug from me, and I'm looking forward to coming back to Australia. <laughs> Hopefully soon. All right, brother. Take care, man. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye. See you.